today we will be discussing on MME 102 and MMEL 102 that is related to obstetrics and gynecology of PGDMC's program. To discuss the issues, we have three experts today. To my right, Professor Sunesh Kumar, he is professor at All India History of Medical Sciences. He has been involved in our program as a course writer and also editor. To his right, Professor Chitra Raghunandan, she is professor at Lady Hadding Medical College. She is also involved as a course writer and editor and also has been involved as a counselor for the PGDMC students uh, for last 5-7 years. And to the extreme right, uh, Professor Gauri Gandhi, she is professor at Molana Medical College and also has been involved as a counselor. Now, uh, we can go to the normal labor because uh, we expect the institutional dairy value to increase, but uh, unfortunately it is around 30 percent or so. Uh, so, wherever there is facility for institutional delivery, we should promote it, but even if it is a home delivery or it is uh, a um, trend high is uh, conducting the delivery, we should know that uh, what is the physiology of labor, what is the uh, complication uh, possible, so that we take uh, the prevention in time. Uh, Dr. Chitra will you tell us that uh, what is the uh, um, normal labor, what is the uh, approach we should have? Pregnancy in human beings is unique uh, in the sense that till 9 months the baby is nurtured in the uterus which is closed and it protects the fetus and at the end of 9 months within few hours the suddenly the labor contractions start and the baby is expelled out of the birth canal. So, this is labor and when uh, it is we call it as a normal labor when a baby which has reached the period of viability, the period of full uh, maturity that is between 37 to 41 weeks of gestation and the baby which is in normal lie and position that is in cephalic presentation and more commonly the vertex presentation without any aid with normal uterine forces labor pains is expelled out of the uterus in a uh, within a period of 12 to 24 hours. So, this is what is normal labor. So, considerable energy is used in this process in that few hours hence it is called labor and it is associated with pain also hence it is called these are called labor pains which are very significant and they are appreciated by the patient. Uh, normal labor has different, uh, the, it is an interplay between the anatomical factors and physiological factors. These anatomical factors are the maternal passages and the anatomy of the baby and the physiological factors are the uterine forces which push the baby out from the maternal passages. Now, the maternal pelvis is obliquely placed in an erect posture. It has got a pelvic brim, the cavity and outlet. It is not a straight barrel like center, centrally placed uh, cavity, but the cavity has a C shaped curve curving from anterior uh, the pelvic brim, the cavity and the outlet. It forms uh, the axis is a, a curved passage. The baby has to pa pass through a curved passage and this is possible by the powerful uterine forces which forces through this uh, curved passage. The pelvis prepares itself at the time of delivery, the pelvic sacroiliac joints, the pubic symphysis, they all relax at the time of onset of labor. Even little before that, in the last few weeks of pregnancy, they become lax. The soft tissues which are covering the inside of the pelvis are soft and they are ready for the passage of the baby. The pelvis has brim cavity and outlet and the passage this passage should be sufficient for the passage of the baby. The term baby has a size which should be well fitting into this uh, pelvis and should be able to pass through and that is what is normal labor. Uh, we can have the baby is maintaining itself in an attitude of uh, universal flexion this is the it is the forming an ovoid just has to reduce its all its dimensions and when it is passing through this pelvis the all the diameters they are all getting compressed and it is able to squeeze it out itself out of the pelvis. 
The soft tissues are easily compressible, but the fetal skull which is first to enter the pelvic rim and is able to pass through the pelvis, this also has got an adaptation mechanism. It has got its sutures, it has got its fontanelles. The sutures are able to somewhat ride over each other. The frontal suture goes below the parietal two parietal bones. The sagittal sutures they overlap, and the coronal suture can occipital bone also can slide beneath it. So slight amount of this is called molding of the fetal head. This is again an adaptation during labor for the baby's head to pass through the pelvic bones. The maternal forces that are involved, they are important very important in the sense that these are the forces which are going to push the baby out of the pelvis initially the pelvis the uterus is a closed organ with a cervix which is about 2.5 cm in length this cervix is taken up into the lower portion of the uterus or the lower segment of the uterus which is developed during pregnancy from isthmus that isthmus is a portion between the anatomical loss and the histological loss which is about 2 to 3 millimeter in a non pregnant state but it now it grows up in during pregnancy as the baby grows up and the upper portion of the uterus which forms the upper segment is muscular whereas this lower segment is somewhat less muscular more fibrous this the upper portion is called the active segment and the lower segment is a passive portion. The cervix which is firm in consistency at the time of onset of uh, beginning uh, late stages of pregnancy and beginning of labor becomes much more soft and pliable. This cervix which is there now has to open up during labor. So this process starts as effacement of the cervix. The cervix now is now incorporated into the lower uterine segment slowly during the early labor and the cervical length decreases. This is called effacement of the cervix. We express this effacement as a percentage of this length of the cervix as 25 percent, 50 percent, 75 percent and now 100 percent means the fully effaced cervix. So as effacement occurs the internal loss opens up and the external loss still remains closed and once the entire effacement has occurred then the external loss opens up and this is called the dilatation of the cervix. The dilatation of the cervix progresses as the labor progresses from 1 centimeter to 10 centimeter. The cervix is called fully dilated once the, survey, the cervix is about 10 centimeter dilated that is the external loss is opened up up to 10 centimeter mm -hmm. for the passage of a full grown baby's head which is also measuring 9.5 centimeter at bi biparietal transverse diameter and AP diameter when a well um, uh, fully flexed head is also around 9.4 centimeter. So that is effacement of the cervix in a primary gravida and a multi gravida. The effacement and dilatation may produce simultaneously in a multi para that me multi gravida that is who has already had deliveries in the past in a primary there is first effacement now there is then there is followed by dilatation so you can see on the picture on the right side that the cervix is nearly fully effaced whole length of the cervix has been incorporated into the lower uterine segment and then there is opening up of the external os now this is the uh, physiology of labor that is powerful uterine contractions which increase the intrauterine pressure. This uterine pressure during labor from a baseline of 10 uh, millimeters it increases as a as about 60 to 80 in advanced labor. The myometrium contracts puts pressure on the bag of fluid that is amniotic fluid. This is initially once uh, cerv when cervix is closed the forces counteracting forces are passing laterally but once the cervix starts effacing the pressure is more and more either the hydrostatic pressure of the fluid is towards the cervix now this opens effaces the cervix opens up the cervix once the bag of membrane ruptures the fetal head directly comes in contact with the uh, cervix and it further dilates 
Now, this is uh, the cervical dilatation can be put in a graphic form. When we see it in a um, serial, a large number of women are studied and the cervical dilatation has been studied in these patients, it is observed that initially from 0 to 3 centimeter the dilatation is slow and it takes about 0 to 8 hours. This phase is called a latent phase and after that there is an acceleration of the dilatation of the cervix. There is a phase slope a fast growing slope and this dilatation now starts occurring at the rate of 1 centimeter per hour in a primary gravida and maybe 1.5 centimeter per hour in a multi gravida. This is full dilated cervix, the pressure of the fluid is now directed fully downwards. Now that is the labor di cervical dilatation presented as a graphic form, it is also known as the Friedman's curve. Now, the latent phase if you see in the first stage is lasting from 0 to 8 and this is the phase when the dilatation is from 0 to 3 centimeter. After that there is an active phase, there is an acceleration phase, a phase of maximum slope and then there is a deceleration. From 4 to 9 centimeter the dilatation is occurring at the rate of 1 centimeter per hour. So, by another 6 hours or so the patient should be delivering. So, average duration of labor in a primary gravida is anywhere between 12 to 16 hours. In a multi gravida, the same may finish off in 8 to 12 hours time. Now, the dilatation once it starts from 4 to 10 centimeter, here is the time now the mechanism of labor also come into play. The descent, more flexion, the you have uh, know the cardinal movements of mechanism of labor the descent, flexion, the internal rotation, these are occurring in the late phases of dilatation that is this uh, dilatation uh, is between 4 to 10 centimeter is proceeding at a rapid rate and at this, at this time the uterine forces are also maximum and this uh, from the beginning of labor pains till 10 cent uh, centimeter is the first stage of labor as you all know. Now, once the cervix is fully dilated, the head which was uh, initially higher level from it could have been at a brim, now it would have entered the pelvis during labor. Then, once the cervix is fully dilated, the head starts descending into the vagina and come out of the introitus. So, that is the descent of the head uh, which combines the fetal descent. If you observe initially the fe fetal uh, descent, fetal uh, head is coming at a slow rate inside the pelvis, but once the cervix is fully dilated, this rapidly descends down and it is delivered out of the introitus. Now, uh, labor is divided into the say, preparatory phase a dilatational phase and a pelvic phase according to the onset of labor, dilatation and the descent of the head and delivery of the baby. Mechanism of labor denotes the cardinal movements of the fetus that it undergoes at the time of labor. The various movements that the baby undergoes to adjust itself into the pelvis and come out of the pelvis are descent with flexion, this descent and flexion goes on till the end of delivery. Now, how do when does this descent and flexion starts? This starts at the onset of labor, goes on during the latent phase and in the early uh, active phase as well. The internal rotation which occurs with the, the baby reaching the pelvic floor. Now, this may coincide with full cervical dilatation or even little before that internal rotation may begin. The process of extension, external rotation, restitution and external rotation they occur after full cervical dilatation. So, you must have an idea have as to what are the, these movements occurring and when are these movements occurring? So, the picture is showing initially the baby is in first stage of labor, early first stage, the passive phase when there is descent, 
with flexion the head is in left occipital anterior position the baby is descending down with more and more flexion once it reaches the level of ischial spines or the level of levator ani it undergoes anterior rotation in left occipital anterior position this is known as internal rotation the head moves in the anterior direction why because the pelvis is inclined anteriorly the levator ani floor is also inclined anteriorly and the force from above pushes the baby towards the anterior posterior diameter now which is now bigger in the lower part of the pelvis and near the outlet so once the baby moves by internal rotation the occiput is coming behind the pubic symphysis from the left occipital anterior position once this corresponds to the late phases of cervical dilatation that is in active phase and once the cervix is nearly fully dilated the process of extension uh, and restitution and external rotation occur the extension is when the baby's occiput has come below the lower border of the pubic symphysis it acts as a fulcrum for the baby's head and with pressure from above the head which now negotiates a c-shaped curve of the pelvic outlet uh, now extends the vertex the brow and the face are being born this internal rotation had produced a twist in the neck of the baby of 1/8 of a circle now once the head has come out by extension there is restitution that means the twist in the neck is undone this also corresponds to the movement of the shoulders now then there is external rotation the baby's head moves towards the same side on the maternal left in left occipital anterior position further on to the left now this at this time the shoulders which were in oblique dam opposite oblique diameter the anterior shoulder will now hinge against the lower border of the pubic symphysis as the pressure from above continues of uterine contractions and bearing down efforts on the part of the patient the posterior shoulder sweeps out of the introitus and once that is released the anterior shoulder just falls down in a natural labor and the baby's body now slips out so this is the mechanism of labor which corresponds to the cervical dilatation curve the students they have already conducted deliveries during their undergraduate days as they have observed in their partograph graph they can timely refer without delay to the first referral unit and to the district hospital or the tertiary hospitals so that intervention can be done for these patients in time